So, I have three five-speed gearboxes now, Brian. And that is the filthiest one of them all. And yet, it's still the one we need to use because it's the one that I modified, if you cash your mind back to many, many episodes, many, many moons ago. So what we're doing here is A, testing the jig to see if it's going to allow the clearance for this gearbox to go in, but B, dry fitting the gearbox on its own. No prop, no engine, just the box, because what I need to do is run the fuel line but it's getting congested under there and I want to make sure I've got the clearance when the box is in to get the fuel line by without it contacting. And of course, without an engine and a diff and everything else in the road, that should be an easy thing to work out. The only question is, can we get that in on its own to there with no cranes? Look at it, look at the enthusiasm. <laughs> How out of breath are you? I'm fine. I'm quite out of breath. Right, so now what we've got is gearbox roughly in position. Now there's a couple of points I need to highlight on this. The first is, the last time I tried this, this little casing for the detent pin, that normally won't clear this access bit, but with a slight bit of rotation, it went in okay. The only thing that's left here is I've not got the mount on, it's just resting on the chassis. But we'll get the mount on in a minute. Obviously I knack to that, which I'm remembering as I go. I've got to take the whole mount off, put the rubber in, put the whole mount back on. But that's fine. But what it means is I don't think the engine attached to this will make that a permissible route. So I'm kind of worried here because as you can see, getting that detent pin in and out with the access I have now is going to be tricky. But that is the joys of having a kit car. I'm going to have to support this box so that I can take the mount off, bugger about, get the rubber in, put the mount back on. And that's where the beauty of the jig comes in. Genius ways of hanging a gearbox without an engine. What do you think? Granted, won't work in most cars. Anyway, we have put it in and I have come up with the following. The fuel pipe route from the back to the front is going to be tricky if I did my original plan, which was to run up the top of the console all the way up to here and then just pop out straight where the inlet manifold is. It's just far too congested with the shift there is for the gearbox. And I've got to remember that this thing will move from left to right under load and deceleration. However, there's absolutely loads of room at the bottom. There isn't a good reason for me not to put it down there as long as it's not hanging below the bottom of the car. So I think if we come out the bottom, down to here, and then just snake up and around, that's going to be nice, secure, and just as effective a route as it would have been running up the top. So that solves that problem. But in typical tools and track style, I've now uncovered another one. And as you can probably imagine, it's because of something I've half-arsed earlier on in the series and thought, I'll worry about that later. Well, it's now later. So, as you remember, we chopped out a big notch and spent one in piece trying to get the chassis to clear the clutch lay cylinder. Remember, it's got this big long rod that comes in and out and I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to clip the chassis at any dodgy little points. Well, it's completely pointless. <laughs> Having put this gearbox on and squared it at 90 degrees to this 90 degrees, i.e. making sure the gearbox is perfectly parallel, it's still going to hit. Which is pretty annoying to say the least, but as you can see, it is just where the edge of the pedal box assembly is going to be. You can actually see the reflection shining back in it. The issue I've got here is I am pretty much out of room. We have a bit of a parallax angle here, but trust me, even if I trim the pedal box back, it's going to hit the chassis. If the pin's going to hit the chassis, there's a pretty good chance the arm will as well. But the problem with the arm is I don't know how much full travel I'm going to need because I don't have a clutch to activate on to, so I can engage and disengage it. And the only way to do that is to throw the engine in for this one thing to suss out. So I need to come up with some other way <sighs> if only there was one I'd built earlier. In fact, if only there was another spare that I could actually just activate here. Uh, right, I've clearly got a problem when it comes to MXIs, but in this one occasion, it's now a solution. That's handy. Now, as easy as it would be to use this as a measurement, 
it doesn't have a master cylinder on it. And by all accounts, there's really no way, <laughs> given the pressure plate springs, to actually activate this. I'm going to try it. I've been trying to do this for like 10, 15 minutes now. It ain't happening. Definitely not enough for me to get an accurate measurement on it. So by all accounts, Project Race Car is going to have to come to the rescue. So with the clutch fully in, that's sitting at about 80 mil from the boss there to the clutch. Release. And then we go down to 65. Hit it again, just in and out. That just seems to be the full range of motion, so it is not using the full distance of the pedal housing hole. So although I haven't pumped the sleeve cylinder out here, I have attached the clutch fork onto its little spigot and fully sent it out. And as you can see, from there to the boss, we're sitting at about 90. So we have got, even with the worst clutch in the world, and it'll be the best because we're going to put a new clutch in, we are going to have clearance on the release fork. The only thing I'll need to check is will we have clearance on the sleigh sander? Now this is a bit of an odd plunger setup for a sleigh sander. As you'll see, this dome part here, that's what actually actuates on the release fork. Uh, obviously dome so that as the release fork moves through its motion, there's always a point of contact around that. But this thing, I just thought surely that's just in case there's a rattle to keep it in place. And then I looked a bit further. It's just rubber. Now I don't think I'm going to get away with deflecting that every time I push gears in. But what we could do is just roll the dice. So with no further need for the gearbox to be in, let's see if I can get it out by myself. Time for more glass fibre fun. Yay! Uh, we've pulled out the scuttle, the lesser spotted scuttle that we did many, many moons ago. As you can see, if you remember, we lengthened it, obviously with perhaps less bloody debris in the way. But that is its location. The last time we lengthened this and we buggered around with it, I left the steering shaft hole open because we had no steering shaft. We had no idea what was going on there. We have, well, Nothing going on there. There's absolutely no need for that hole. What we at worst are going to need is probably a small crescent just to clear that and then we're looking to do a little aluminium perhaps ridge just to cover the crescent of that going down. So that can all be made gone and we can also probably delete this little hole here for Christ knows what that was but it's irrelevant. So we'll do that. I've also flattened down the glass fibre we did, gave it a bit of a key in some of the more flat areas with the sand and the pad. And we are going to then put on glass fiber filler. Glass fiber filler, yes, this stuff. Now, for those who didn't watch the earlier episodes, glass fiber filler is basically this. Normal filler with strands of glass fiber in it. This is handy because it gives it a bit more strength and flexibility than normal glass fiber does. It also makes a hell of a pain in the arse to get the hardener in, but we'll do that. So we're gonna hit the back end of this, the two sides in that and we're going to bridge up with normal glass fibre the front of this. And then I'm going to sit back and go, yay, I've made progress, whilst completely omitting the fact that we still need to finish the bonnet, and we still need to finish everything else, but it's progress. The tin's difficult, wait till you see with the mixing stage. I'm glad that of all, this, all the screwdrivers that have been sacrificed to either fixing your van or fixing this low cost, you've got the shiniest, newest fucking... It's just to open it. Jesus Christ, man. A grip to this lid, man. Nice. Oh, I cannot wait to start this.
Some final thoughts on this box just before we move on. I did have a quick scour around it just to see how all the fitment was now that the panels are on. And it's not great. Well, it's okay. I mean, it's not going to give me any problems, but this guy, this boss here, it's nothing more than just structure, uh, reinforcement ribs for the casing. But the issue is it's also very, very close to the chassis leg. And as you can see, we've trimmed out where the original gearbox mount the PPF was, and that was definitely to give us clearance from this area, where it is quite tight. This is still not ideal. So I'm probably going to just trim a wee bit more off here and also dress this back now that I know that the final cut is okay, and we can just fire it in and forget. The only other thing is this switch. Now, I need to work out what this is. It's either the reverse or the neutral switch, but the problem I've got with it is, it is really protrusive. It's almost touching the aluminium side panel. Now, I could probably just hammer in a light relief to the side panel. I'm not too fussed about a wee bubble sitting there just to clear it, but I'm kind of more questioning whether or not I need it. Uh, truth be told, I don't really want to delete things just for the sake of it, but I might try and find a wee solution just to neaten that up. Other than that, it needs to be clean. I have inherited many degreasing products from people who think I might find them useful because naturally I do a lot of dangerous degreasing. Let's start with what's probably going to be the shittest. General purpose degreaser cleaner suitable for many automotive, industrial or household applications. Removes grease, grime and oil from many substances including aluminium. Well it bloody better do. minutes later and it's barely touched the sides. The only thing I'll say about this is at least it smells nice but what I've found with degreasers if they smell nice they will not degrease nice. Let's get some nasty stuff in this. This stuff is not mano as you can see it is just marked as cleaner because the last bottle I bought this in it dissolved the arse through and probably started leaking. How good is this? Well if you don't concentrate it and you just use it with a normal brush, it dissolves the brush, and I think the only thing that's ever held up to it is an actual industrial little bucket. So we are going to not aerosol this because there's no way to put it through a pump without it dissolving that, but we are going to put it on neat with a brush and leave that for 30 minutes. If I've got a gearbox left at the end of it, I'll be bloody happy. You better believe I'm cloughing up for this. Clean. Done. That is clean. I mean, it'll do. It's as clean as it'll get. Yeah, I mean, that, that is clean. The only problem we have now is... Oh, and the filler. 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 Filthy. Yeah, we need to clean that. I don't know what to do with that. I mean, I feel like what we've just done there is going to be significantly more complex with this. Mm. It's not going to be fun, is it? And there's probably in there how many oil leaks? All of them. Because it's a master. So... I should have bought a few. I shouldn't. To be fair, the MX-5 engines are fantastic at leaking oil. 
Well, we're going to find out how fantastic. <laughs> they are very good at leaking oil. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's for another episode. We've done enough today. Like, bell, subscribe, patreon.com slash tools and track. In the next low cost episode, I'm going to deal with this engine whilst also continually dealing with all of the glass fibre fun. But the target is get the engine in the box and for good. Yay. Can't do that without an engine. So until next weekend, guys, drive safe. Bye. <laughs>